5.33 miles, 8 minutes, 33 seconds per mile, running in some beautifully balmy temperatures, 45 degrees in the middle of winter. I'll definitely take that any day, running in the Ghost 11 GTX. Uh, things are still a bit messy and slippery out there, so even though it's pretty warm, still wanting to run in a little bit of a winterized shoe because some of those puddles are really cold. Uh, but today, what I had to do was I tried to find a new run commute route home. So the route that I normally take is I leave my office and head down towards the Chicago Riverwalk and then I run the Riverwalk until it meets the Lakefront Trail and from there I get home. But I found a couple of weeks ago that uh, parts of the Riverwalk were closed and I thought it was because it was icy because it was not terribly cold a couple of weeks ago but it was very slippery out there and so I thought maybe that's why they were closing it but I later found out that there are certain parts that are under construction and that's why it's gonna be closed and I think it's gonna be under construction all winter long and so today what I want to do is find a new way to get from work to home and there's really three things that I'm looking for for my run commute the first is I want it to be at least uh, 10K. So I'd like to get about six miles in for a run in the afternoon. I think that's a pretty good distance. The second thing is I want to be safe. So I want to minimize the number of stops and intersections that I have to go through. Getting to the lakefront uh, trail from the river walk was really nice because there was a couple of blocks I had to run on surface streets in the loop. But then once I got to the river walk, it was pretty much uninterrupted. Uh, as long as I didn't stop to take photos, which I sometimes do. But as long as I kept, but if I wanted to, I could keep running from the lakefront trail pretty much almost the entire way home without running into a single traffic light or intersection where I might get hit by a car. So that's something that I'm looking for. And the third thing is that if I can, I'd like to make it scenic. I'm very fortunate because Chicago is such a beautiful architecture city and it has such great lake views. Being able to run that run commute really makes my afternoon enjoyable and it takes something that normally people hate, commuting, and turns it for me into something that is really enjoyable and something that I look forward to uh, on many days, in, especially in the wintertime. Uh, and so for this new route, I was able to do one of the things. I was able to get at least scenic. And so uh, the new route that I took is instead of heading to the Riverwalk, I just cut straight across the Chicago Loop uh, to get towards Millennium Park, which is where uh, Cloudgate Sculpture is, uh, which is more colloquially known as the Bean, uh, and the Crown Fountains, which are the fountains that you saw in today's video. And so that's a nice thing to go run by every day. I usually try not to go there too much in the summertime because it's just jam-packed with tourists and it's hard to kind of run in that area. But in the wintertime when I'm run commuting, uh, it's nice and empty or relatively empty, uh, especially now that the holiday shopping season has passed. But in terms of my other goals, in terms of avoiding traffic at intersections, uh, running across the loop in the afternoon during rush hour is not exactly a great way of avoiding intersections or cars. So that first part getting from my office to at least Millennium Park is a little bit difficult to do. There's a lot of traffic lights. They're not time for pedestrians. It's time for traffic. And so it's a little bit of a, not a literal uphill battle, but a figurative uphill battle. So not exactly great in that regard. I much prefer the river walk. And in terms of my main goal, which is to get, try to get about 10K out of an afternoon run, I didn't get it today, 5.33 miles. Although 
I double checked. I've been using the stride foot pod to track my distances, paces, get that power meter uh, number. And it gave me 5.33 miles today, but there were a couple times along the route where I would look down at my watch to see, you know, how fast am I going at this exact moment? And I would get that connecting screen, uh, meaning that the foot pod had lost connection with my watch. And I don't know if that's just a communication issue where uh, I just can't get displayed current data, but the pod is getting it. But then I also looked at my map, my run distance. So I mapped based on the tracing that I had from the foot pod, I could see where did I take a left or a right, because I try to keep running even though if like maybe a, a traffic light has stopped me, then I'll cut over, run another block, and then try to get kind of to where I need to go. So I figured out where I was, and I mapped that, and I mapped the entire rest of the run, and I mapped my run distance, which is, I still, still think an approximation, uh, gave me 6.33 miles. So it was a one mile difference on a 6.33 mile run, like 15% off. So that's a little bit troubling. I'm gonna get in touch with Stride. They've been really nice. They reached out to me after I made uh, my initial Stride video. Uh, and so I'm gonna see if they can answer some questions like if the distances are off, what does that do to the paces? How does that affect the translation of my data going from Stride to Strava? and things like that. So those are some questions that I have and uh, hopefully I can get them answered. Uh, I know that they have lots of forums and things like that, uh, but if I have the uh, luxury of having someone directly that I can talk to, uh, I'd love to be able to do that and try to do that. So that way uh, I can get stuff, direct information directly from the source, uh, from hopefully the most reliable source, Stride itself. And the mileage is not a huge deal because if I'm shooting for a 50 mile week, losing a mile here or there is not a huge deal. It's 2% here and there in the overall week. Uh, but it's something that overall I want to make sure I'm tracking correctly because in the winter time, I'm not that concerned about being the exact distances I'm running in terms of tracking my mileage during the course of a workout. But as we get to warmer temperatures and I'm gonna start doing more interval training, uh, some tempo runs where I need to be able to accurately measure that I've run a mile for the sake of mile repeats, that's gonna become a bigger issue and something that I'm looking at a little bit more closely. Uh, and on this particular day, temperature wasn't an issue, which I've been giving Stride a pass quite a bit because of uh, temperature, uh, if it's been like below 30, and I'm thinking, well, you know what? I know it can technically handle temperatures below that, but the temperature at my feet, on my foot, as it's you know running through the air at certain air temps, ground temps, you know, whatever the temperature that's on my watch might not accurately reflect what's going on at the pod itself. And so uh, I've been giving it a pass, but today was a warm day. I shouldn't have had any problems. Now Stride did tell me that uh, if you have your phone Bluetooth and a watch, uh, that those two things are gonna compete for connections at times with the foot pod, so they recommend turning off Bluetooth to the phone, but I have Bluetooth earbuds, and so if I'm listening to music, that makes it difficult for me, so I haven't tested that out yet. I will test it, but for my run commute, um, I'm not that concerned trying to keep it nice and easy, very loose. Uh, I don't need to do that test yet. That test is coming. So uh, that's the new route. I'll probably be taking something that looks a lot like that uh, for the next while until that construction is finished down by the river walk. Uh, before I go for today, I wanna talk about today's charity runner for the day. Today's charity runner for the day is Caroline Newton Phillips, and she's gonna be running the 2019 London Marathon for Pancreatic Cancer UK. And uh, the reason she's running is because she had a friend that was diagnosed, uh, a longtime friend with cancer, and she felt helpless and just didn't know what to do. And so she decided to run a marathon as a way of helping out her friend and showing solidarity and support for her friend. I think that's an absolutely amazing reason to run. I've donated 10 pounds to her cause, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. May we all have a friend like Carolyn Newton Phillips who'd be willing to run a marathon uh, for us. So I think that's just absolutely amazing. Uh, if you are a charity runner or if you know of a charity runner, uh, please send that fundraising information my way. I'd love to be able to spotlight you and what you're doing. I'd love to be able to give you $10 and tell everyone else who's watching these videos about the great work that you're doing 
for your local community. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?